<laughs> okay, this is third try. Um, Kamala and Maya's Big Idea, written by Mina Harris, illustrated by Ana Ramirez Gonzalez. Kamala and Maya's Big Idea. You know what should be out there? Kamala asked her sister Maya. Us? said Maya. A slide, said Kamala. And a swing, Maya added. A playground, they shouted together. Kamala and Maya had an idea. It was a very good idea and a very big idea. They were going to need help. Wouldn't it be great if there was a playground in the courtyard, Maya said. That does sound nice, Mommy agreed. How can we make that happen, Kamala asked. Well, I suppose the first step would be to ask the landlord, the person who owns the building. So Kamala wrote a letter and Maya drew a picture and they went to see the landlord to discuss the idea. The landlord thought about it for less than a second. Hmm, I don't think so, no, no. That was not the answer they wanted, but they weren't ready to give up. That night, the sisters tried to think of ways to turn a no into a yes. They asked the other kids in the building if they wanted a playground in the courtyard. Did they? Of course they did, and they had ideas too. Let's have a teeter-totter and a basketball hoop and flowers. So Kamala wrote a longer letter, and they went to see the landlord together. Dear landlord, right now, the courtyard of our building is empty and no one uses it. If there were swings, kids could fly high. If there was a sandbox, kids could build. If there was a slide, kids could go so far, so fast. Can you build it, please? The landlord thought about it for less than five seconds. A project this big is expensive. We don't have the money for that. Do your parents know you're here? This is not the answer they wanted, but Kamala was not ready to give up. If we ask our parents and do it ourselves, can we fix up the courtyard? The landlord thought about that for a whole 10 seconds. Finally, he shrugged and said, if you can do it your, yourselves, sure. That wasn't exactly the answer they wanted, but it was a start. The kids all spoke to their parents about their ideas for the courtyard. They hung up posters and knocked on neighbors' doors, but they got the same answers from everyone. I'm sorry. Wow, that's a big job. Wish I could help, which they knew meant no, no, no. But then Mr. Green stopped to t talk. I work construction, and I, would, I could maybe get some scrap lumber and some sand for a sandbox. Really? Cam Kamala said. Yes, exclaimed Maya. Okay, I'll get try. But it wasn't a yes, but right now maybe was the sweetest word they'd ever heard. Maybe gave them hope. The next weekend maybe turned into a yes. The kids all helped measure and Mr. Green cut the boards. Then they sanded and hammered and sanded some more. Then came the actual sand. They were all thanking Mr. Green when Miss... Lopez stopped to talk. I work at a garage. Maybe they have an extra tire for a teeter-totter. Another maybe. In the weeks that followed, lots of I don't knows turned into maybes and then yeses. They plant in flowers. This is a teeter-totter. No one could do everything, but everyone could do something. Kamala and Maya wanted everyone to celebrate the new playground, so they made another big poster inviting their neighbors to a potluck party. There were hot dogs and hummus and spicy chicken and potato salad, strawberries and brownies and lemonade. Mrs. Flores set up a sprinkler for the kids to run through, and Mr. Green brought the music. Kamala admired the new playground, but she noticed there was still one thing missing. No one knew how to make a slide, but Mrs. Miss Flores knew that there might, where they might buy one. I teach at Emerson Elementary, and they are redoing their playground. Maybe we could buy the old slide. This was different. Make kind. Uh, this was a different kind of maybe. A how can we afford that maybe? 
but now everyone was trying to find a way to turn that maybe into a yes. These brownies are delicious. Maybe we could have a bake sale. We could all bring toys and books and have a sidewalk sale. Those kids are thinking. Good job. <laughs> that looks like Easter eggs. That's funny. Hmm. No one could do everything, but everyone could contribute something. See, they were selling clothes that don't fit. When the slide arrived at last, Maya and Kamala got the first ride. The landlord was impressed. I want to shake your hand, girls, he said. You did a good job. You all did a good job. Kamala and Maya had an idea. It was a very good idea and a very big idea. And with a lot of help, they made it happen. Hooray for Kamala and Maya. Hooray for Persisters. What's next, Kamala? Kamala looked up and said, I'm wondering what the view is like from the roof. <laughs> Growing up, I loved hearing stories about and seeing old pictures of my mom, Maya Harris, and my aunt, Kamala Harris, as young girls in the, in the 1970s. There's one picture in particular of my mom and aunt that I love. My mom is the one with, in the bandana and my aunt in the bell-bottom jeans, just staring at the camera with fierce determination. They look like they've just conquered the world. That's how I perceived them when I was younger. As I've gotten older, it's only become more true. They would go on to achieve great things, both as public interest lawyers dedicated to improving their communities. They always made sure I knew I could do anything too. A specific antidote from their childhood always stuck with me, how they worked together to turn the unused courtyard in their apartment building into an area for kids to play. It was an early lesson in the power of organizing and an example of what my grandmother, Sh Shamala Harris, a scientist and civil rights activist, always reminded us, each of us has a part to play, no matter how small, by the time I had two daughters myself, I knew I had to write a book inspired by that story. This picture book is based on those events, but it incorporates incorporates the fictional characters and details that I draw in on my own imagination and interpretation of what happened. I wanted to memorialize it not only for my girls, but also for children across the world. I was so lucky to grow up with such strong female role models my grandmother, my mother, my aunt. I hope this book inspires a new generation of activists to know that they can be effective agents of change if they think creatively, engage their communities, and never, ever give up. This is Kamala Harris, and in January, she will be the Vice President of the United States. Very impressive. This is an awesome book. Bye-bye, Miles.